It's been a really enjoyable 2022, and I hope that you have also had a great year in your collecting, wherever you are in the world. Best to go and make a cup of tea, because this is a video that you're certainly going to want to watch all the way through. Let's start off back in 1776, when those good American folks decided to become independent from uh, us over in Great Britain and the Declaration of Independence which you see here and pay special attention to the signature panel at the bottom to one John Hart also known as Honest John who was a judge at the time and a congressman. The Declaration of Independence was of course signed on July the 4th 1776 but in the March of that year if you look at the middle signature on this uh, King George shilling uh, is John Hart. So the same person who was signing the Declaration of Independence a few months earlier in March of that year was signing this shilling uh, promissory note from King George. Uh, and it's an amazing survivor. There were obviously quite a few of these at the time, but this is an absolutely amazing survivor. And um, very, uh, very notable. And John Hart's signature is actually on quite a few of these of different denominations. And it's just a really, really interesting artifact that I wanted to show you that came in for submission to PMG, the uh, paper money grading company that is part of the NGC group. Um, absolutely fabulous and a real pleasure to uh, have that in my possession just for a, a few short weeks. The next coin that I want to show you is um, an 1885 Melbourne Mint uh, regular sovereign. You'll find shieldback versions of these and also ones with the, uh, the regular St George and Dragon. Um, this one looks to be in very good condition. Um, I guess there's a possibility that this is not genuine. I don't know. It's one of the reasons I'm having it graded. The luster almost looks too good to be true. Uh, but I'm going to put it into NGC and see what they think. Uh, I did put it up for a while on the Numistaka Facebook group. And the consensus uh, from the group seems to be that it probably was a genuine coin. But... Um, you know, I always err on the side of caution because this coin came from uh, a seller on eBay and, of course, eBay does have uh, somewhat of a dodgy reputation when it comes to uh, fake and counterfeit coins. The next coin that I'm showing you here is a, a sixpence, but it's not in any way an ordinary sixpence. This one is a matte, a matte proof sixpence. Yep, matte proof. Uh, what does that mean? Well, it's got essentially a kind of very flat, um, a very flat presentation as a result of a special finishing by the Royal Mint, which they did to a few coins they wanted to use to photograph. So there's normally only three or four coins produced of some special year editions as a matte proof. And this is one of those very special coins and an exceptional rarity. The next two exceptional coins that I'm bringing you today were sent in for submission by the coinery. Uh, that's an auction house and collector's emporium based up north in Leeds. Uh, great people to know when it comes to pre-decimal coins. Uh, and in fact, coins just like this one that are available normally from the coinery run by Richard and Guy. So uh, I'll leave the link below if you want to make contact with them. But this is an 1831 penny. There's actually two versions of this coin that were sent in for grading. Um, they both did extremely well. And in fact, they've graded as among the highest uh, of their type. And there's only a few of these coins actually were ever made as uh, part of the 1831 mint sets and also probably there were a few specials made by the mint for collectors and museums um, after 1831 as well 
And the difference between these coins is, uh, as you'll see in a second, the coin rotation. So one of them is coin rotation and the other one is medal rotation. Uh, very, very unusual and very lovely. Well, I've kind of been saving the best to last. And uh, these coins were kindly photographed over in Australia by Eric from Drake Sterling. Uh, and if you want to buy any of these coins, they uh, unless they're pre-sold, they should be available from Eric. And I'm sure he'd be delighted to show you in more detail. But this one is a very, very rare, exceptionally rare 1830 um, pattern proof sovereign. So uh, they were playing around with a design, a uh, beautiful shield design uh, by Merlin. And uh, they were playing around with these coins for the 1831 coronation set. And they produced a very few of them um, for review, VIP review, I guess, primarily back in 1830. Um, and they're probably... Um, well, there's only a few known, and uh, they are exceptionally beautiful coins as well. This, uh, this next one uh, kind of makes me weep because I'd love to have this in my collection so badly. Maybe I need to do a deal with Eric on this. But this is an 1871 proof of record half sovereign. There were a very, very few presentation proof sets in 1871. Uh, and a few of these coins have gone through the auctions uh, over the last few years, and they do come up occasionally. But this one is in absolutely beautiful condition, PCGS graded, uh, ultra cameo, uh, really, really beautiful coin, 1871 half sovereign. Um, and uh, I suspect this will disappear from Eric's stock pretty quickly. So if you want this coin in your collection, then you better jump, uh, I guess. Uh, and let Eric know that you're interested in the coin. If you are interested in older British proofs, then half sovereigns are usually just a little bit undervalued compared to uh, full sovereigns. Uh, I think there are more collectors for full sovereigns, but the real um, value, I think, is definitely at the half sovereigns, which will improve in value considerably in the years to come. Uh, at least that's my strategy, and that's what I believe. The next couple of coins I want to show you are um, 1872 Melbourne Sovereigns, but what is different? Here's a regular one for comparison, and you can see one of them is coin alignment and one of them is medal alignment. And uh, the one on the left is extremely rare with only five known examples that have surfaced so far in this different alignment. Um, Eric is a real fan of these kind of varieties, so he's a good guy to speak to about uh, all of these different variety sovereigns, and uh, he keeps an extensive stock of those uh, over in Australia, but he also comes over to London if you're at any of the London coin shows and can bring stuff over uh, a few times a year. So that's all there is for me at the moment. I hope you enjoy today's video. Um, some exceptional items if you're still with me here at the end of the video and uh, wish you all a very very amazing holiday season uh, I'll try and bring you one extra before Christmas as a special otherwise um, take care and till the next one